Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel. So today I have got a problem which is very interesting. And there is a high probability in my opinion that something like this will come up in IITJ soon. Now let's see, the problem is pretty usual what we have seen earlier also. But th there is a little twist here. And some of you might have already seen it. And for many of the students, this might be something pretty new. So let's get started. There is a particle, let's say this particle P. And this is this can move inside, let's say, a hoop of radius R. And it is projected from the lowest point, let's say point P, with the velocity just sufficient to carry it to the highest point. So let's say the highest point is Q. Then we need to find the time after which the reaction between the particle and the hoop is zero. So the important point to note here is that the reaction point can be zero anywhere in between, not necessarily at the highest point. Okay, so we cannot simply just jump to the conclusion and say that at Q, the reaction will be zero. That's not necessary. Okay, and we'll see that. So the first question is, what is V0? If V0 is the velocity with which it is, let's say, projected, and this is going to reach, let's say, point Q, then what is V0? So we can use energy conservation, right? And using this, we can simply write half m v0 square which this is the initial uh, energy for the particle and then finally at q we can assume that the velocity is zero because it's barely reaching the point q and it gains the potential energy which is mg 2r therefore v0 square is 4g r so this is the first equation okay let's call it a okay now as I said, we cannot simply just assume that point Q is the point where the reaction will be zero. So let's assume some point in between. Okay. So let's say this point is S and at this point, the reaction is zero. So let's connect these, these two. Okay. Now, if we draw the free body diagram here, so this is, let's say N, the reaction the mg is downwards. Let's say this angle is theta. Okay. So this angle is pi minus theta. And so is this angle. This is also pi minus theta. And the velocity of this particle at s is let's say something called v. And this is going to be tangent at this point okay so now the free body diagram is complete and let's say along the radial line if we uh, write the equation f equal to ma okay and let's say this line is x so x then we can simply write n plus mg now what is this angle this angle is nothing but pi minus theta. So mg cos pi minus theta equal to mv square by r. And let's say n equal to 0 because the reaction point is 0 of at point s. So that would mean v square equal to minus gr cos theta. So let's also call this equation B. Okay. Now from P to S, energy is still conserved, right? So we can again write the conservation of energy, an equation for that. So initially the energy is half m v0 square. Finally, let's say at point S, it has half m v square is the kinetic energy plus the potential energy is m g r plus m g r cos pi minus theta because the projection of point S here, S prime, this much is r cos pi minus theta because this angle is pi minus theta. 
therefore v0 square equal to v square plus 2g r 1 minus cos theta okay let's call this equation c and from b and c we can write v0 square as v square is minus gr cos theta plus 2g r minus 2g r cos theta and v0 square is nothing but 4gr so we can write 4gr equal to 2gr minus 3gr cos theta and therefore cos theta is minus 2 by 3 okay so now we got the theta at which this is going to be the reaction force will be zero and if you see this cos theta can be you know pi minus theta or minus pi plus theta because it's saying it's negative you can figure that out so far so good but our job is to compute the time it takes to go from p to s okay so that's the question so how do we do that right so if you take equation c okay equation c it says that v square is equal to v0 square minus 2g r 1 minus cos theta therefore 4g r minus 2g r 1 minus cos theta right because v0 square is 2 4g r which is 2g r 1 plus cos theta okay now let's write 1 plus cos theta is nothing but 2 cos square theta by 2 okay so how do we do this cos theta is cos theta by 2 plus theta by 2 which is cos square theta by 2 minus sin square theta by 2 so 2 minus 1 and therefore 1 plus cos theta is 2 cos square theta by 2 okay so v square will be 2 g r into 2 cos square theta by 2 okay since v is having power 2 so that's why i just wanted to convert cos theta into something which can be out of the root okay and v is nothing but omega r okay so that implies omega square r square equal to 4 g r cos square theta by 2 therefore omega is 2 g by r cos theta by 2 and omega is nothing but d theta by dt so this is what i wanted to go to because now i have dt so i can integrate this equation to get the time in terms of theta so if you take the dt here and integrate it so we get time 0 to t equal to 1 by 2 r by g sec theta by 2 d theta right let's say 0 to theta where theta is cos inverse minus 2 by 3 okay now we can simply put d theta also in terms of d theta by 2 so then we will have sec x dx kind of a situation so to do that we need to multiply this by 2 and divide this by 2 so it will become 2 into 1 by 2 r by g 0 to theta sec theta by 2 d theta by 2 now this is very similar to sec x dx so which we already know is ln sec theta by 2 plus 
tan theta by 2. In another video, I have derived this. You can check that out. Uh, it will be there in the comment section or in the description section. Or you might already be knowing it or you can just solve it. 0 to theta. Now, we, we should be getting the theta in terms of sec theta, sec theta by 2 and tan theta by 2. So, from here we already know that cos theta is minus 2 by 3. So, if I keep minus 2 by 3, so this is 2 cos square theta by 2. So, that means cos square theta by 2 is 1 by 6. Therefore, cos theta by 2 is 1 by root 6. Right? And if you take a triangle and this is theta by 2, then this is 1, this is root 6 and this is root 5. So, sec theta by 2 is root 6 and tan theta by 2 is root 5. Right? So, the equation T will be r by g ln root 5 plus root 6. And that's the expression for the time. So, it will take so much time to reach to a point where the reaction force is 0. Now, if you see this is independent of the initial velocity because we assume that the velocity is good enough to take it to the highest point and it, it is also independent of the mass of the particle. Okay. So, I am sure you would have enjoyed this question. This is pretty interesting question and there was something for you to learn and watch out. This might come in one of the examinations. So, please do subscribe to the channel, like this video and share this video with your friends. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and gain access to concepts and tips for doing better in IIT, JEE or other examinations. Keep up the great work.